Scott. Bodybuilders, very special people. Getting fun, getting fun. First of all, before we get started, I think it's very important that you understand that Vince Taylor's type of training techniques is not designed for everyone. It has taken me seven years to construct my body, and through trial and error, I have found the best way to utilize equipment to make things work for me. Now, you understand that the bodybuilding is a personalized sport. Your personality in bodybuilding will determine actually how you train, how you prepare, and what your actual goal is from the reason that you are in the gym. So when you keep that in mind and you take that as a big circumference, Vince Taylor's goal was to perfect his body enough to compete with the best in the world. I have slightly achieved that success, but I'm still working on the ultimate. Now in your particular case, a goal setting is very, very important. Now being an individualist in bodybuilding, you have to understand how your physique works. Once you've understood the technology behind training the body, nutrition, and recuperation, the three major factors in bodybuilding, you will too be able to construct your body to win and take you to the top. So with that, let's rock and roll. All right, let's talk about training the chest. The two basic movements in training the chest. One, we're talking about the barbell press. And secondly, will be the dumbbell presses. Now, to utilize both is for a perfect example of getting mass training for massive weight movement. What we're trying to do here now by using the dumbbell press is to concentrate on shaping the mu pectoral muscle and also working it throughout your training routine. The most important thing to remember, there are two separate movements. And when you're training for size and mass, always use a two-handed movement such as the barbell press to add maximum resistance to a muscle group.
dumbbells should be utilized only to suffice in shaping and controlling the training as you control the muscle throughout that particular training form. And that will take you right into phase by training your shoulders because shoulders is also a pressing movement. Again, for mass movements, you need to utilize two-handed movements. Your overhead shoulder press is by far the best mass building movement that you have. Those can supplement that with also using the shoulder dumbbell overhead press. The same movement utilizing two different apparatuses for the same reason. Now we're going to talk about training the tricep. The tricep movement is also a power movement. It can also be used in training for shape. And you need both when you're trying to construct a perfect arm balance between bicep and tricep. Whenever you're involved in training the tricep, remember this one thing. Max movements are very, very careful. It could become a dangerous exercise to overuse weight on small muscle groups such as the tricep. The basic muscle movements that I prefer are the ones that I demonstrate in a few seconds. When you're using these movements, always remember to use the positive direction, force against the weight under concentration, and also utilize the negative resistance portion of the movement. That will strengthen and also lengthen the muscle that you're training. So the tricep is located in the below your bicep, utilizing good strict form. I must always iterate, it's a small muscle group cannot take serious, heavy, heavy movement as far as weight is concerned. So always remember that in any movement that you're using, chest, shoulders, or tricep, use the comparable amount of weight to support that particular muscle.
two mean the body building and physical fitness go as one. When you're in the gym, you're training the body, you're training the muscles. Therefore, when you're outside, you want to train the cardiovascularity part of the body. That's your heart and your lungs. Now, the aerobic type training are done in many phases. So swimming, jogging, anything in a movement type of positions. So at this point, I would like to tell you now, one of my favorite exercises is running. So without any further ado, let's go take a run. Now let's go to uh, a couple of questions on training, dieting, posing, more technical questions. Uh, first, perhaps some measurements. What is your height? I'm five eight. And weight, mm -hmm. and some measurements, if you like. I well, I'll tell you, the height and weight is usually standard. I'm five feet eight inches tall. Off season, I try to weigh between 225 and 230 pounds. What's um, a lot? Yeah, for yeah, my size. Yes. Um, but I like to compete possibly around 210 or 208 pounds. Mm -hmm. So measurements, that's a different story because I don't really take measurements. They're, um, to me, a, they're not really necessary. A visual appearance gives me the rapport I need to say what needs to be worked on, if the deltoids need to be bigger or if the chest needs to grow more. Um, but circumference-wise, I never even put a measurement up to them. Many people ask, well, your arms are how big? I say, well, close to 21 inches uh, because they're one of my better body parts. My calves are the same thing. They're a little bit over 20 inches. These measurements I know because they happen to be my standout body parts, and yeah. people are always curious to find how big they are. Uh -huh. The legs, the calves. Yes. The calves and the arms. Yes. Uh -huh. um, what are your training principles in general? Well, you know, I train slightly different from everyone else, I think. Mm -hmm. um, because bodybuilding being a, a personalized sport, mm -hmm. you know, it's the beauty of it that one system does not work, so no one can go in and preach you have to train like this. Um, but for a long time, it was very difficult for me to understand that. Young, looking at the sport, not knowing what's going on, you will tend to adopt the theories that you read about. If you can't adjust to those, then you almost admit instant failure. I was able to overcome that by saying, use the basics, you know. Um, Go what works. And for me, basic training works. I tried the different supersets and the different other tactics. But it's good for a pump, you know, a starter. I'm back to basics. Back to basics. Back to basics. Uh -huh. Dumbbells, barbells, right. not the machines. I use machines um, for abdominal training, for example, um, for a variation, because I will variate a lot in my training. Yeah. Um, but when I use basic terminology, it's, it means the basic heavy pressing movements pulling movements, and none of the super technology that is introduced today, you know, that super other pros will use, and these other youngsters coming in will try to mm -hmm. use the same tactics. They're used for a reason, and I feel until you pass that advanced level, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. And then that's where the, all this information comes from. It just destroys your mind if you start. So don't get confused. Go back to the basics. <laughs> back to the basics, yes. And then um, the genetics. 
could you please drop one or two words about the importance of genetics in professional bodybuilding? Mm -hmm. Not uh, everyday bodybuilding, of course, right. in professional bodybuilding. Well, that's a, that's a must because the ones who have the genetic potential, what we what I refer to basically, for example, is your shape. Mm -hmm. You know, you can alter your shape on muscle size and texture, but the physical skeleton shape you can't yeah. alter. So therefore, a genetic potential coming in with the, the broad shoulders, a small waistline, is an advantage for a guy yeah. coming in, especially at the professional level, because right. everyone has a big chest, big arms, big legs. You know, now it's the shape. Who has the aesthetic shape? Yeah. These guys will be the ones to prevail in the end. Uh -huh. That potential is something God gifted. If you got it, you need to be in bodybuilding. If you don't, you need to stop going around saying that you're going to be Mr. Olympia and you're going to be this and you're going to be that because reality is the word. Right. Like in all other professions, yes. by the way, yes. There is a special gift, of course. Mental attitude, Vince, how important is it to you in your training? It's very important. These are the key factors of training, mm -hmm. key factors of bodybuilding, period. Um, I always say that the mind and the body must flow as one. So mentally, if you're prepared to go in, you know what you want to do in the gym, and you have everything down to a key, then your chances of success rate much more higher than someone who is not prepared. Because this sport demands mental attention as well as physical attention. And if you um, just concentrate on one without the other, that means nothing. Mm -hmm. So you have to be mentally prepared to, to do any sport, actually. But bodybuilding is very demanding, mm -hmm. very demanding. Let's go on to diet. Uh, so let's talk nutrition. And there are so many opinions, uh, Vince, about dieting. Uh, so it's easy to get confused about dieting. What's your personal view on dieting? Dieting, I must always say, people need to go back to the basics. Um, <laughs> the basic food groups, you know, once you start getting scientific about everything, it's a problem. My particular diet stems itself off protein, carbohydrates, and or a certain amount of calories. Mm -hmm. um, when I, by trial and error, I've learned that reading the basic food groups, as far as what one does when they diet, and early on it was always the same food groups, chicken or fish, for example. So I stuck that in as a basic term. Um, I was able to increase weight and size off-season by eating beef products. And then when my weight was to be juggled, either more weight or less weight, I would interject beef and chicken. And then when I needed to lean out a lot, I would eat fish. Mm -hmm. So being able to separate this food group will make me bigger. This one will keep my weight more stable. This one will make my weight drop off. Then I would just use that as a plan. And it works for me. Um, I'm not that strict as far as dieting is concerned. What's a different type of question? What's your opinion about steroids? Mm -hmm and about drug testing? My personal opinion is that I think the IFBB is doing a fantastic job. I really appreciate the effort that they are doing and the direction they're trying to take bodybuilding. Mm. Unfortunately, I think that the education of the sport itself, the sport existed long before the interest of going into the Olympia Games were even thought of. Mm. The Growing of bodybuilding had its connotations long before the interest of publicity. What happens uh, now is that the steroid indication or the overexposure of the drug use in bodybuilding is becoming too blatant. Everyone associates hard work and training in the gym automatically to some sort of chemical use, um, which is a negative connotation for bodybuilders themselves who are training very hard to create that substance as far as massive bodies and mm -hmm. detailed muscle groups. Mm -hmm. um, to say one is cheating is only to say one accepts the fact that these particular chemicals work. But the problem is if the genetic potential is not there, then all the chemicals in the world won't make you a champion. Now, we have just utilized the two-part system of push-pull. We have just did all pressing movements, which in conjunction is training the body in one way during one training phase. The other system is called the pulling movement which I'll be utilizing my second day of training when I'm training my back. Now, before you start your back training, remember, it's a very large muscle group that leads a lot of tension. So be very careful when you start each exercise. As we get into back training, one thing I want you to realize is that concentration is the most important thing here to remember. The mind and the body must work together as one. 
When you achieve that, then your training will definitely take a big, giant step forward. All right? So let's keep that in mind before we start training. Biceps is one of the most popular muscle groups that we have. And anytime you notice when someone asks you to show your muscles, they show your biceps. So I'm going to show you a proper way of training the biceps. Number one, remember, the bicep is a long muscle valley from here to here. To train it properly, there's only two types of movements you can do. One is a heavy curl and one is a medium heavy curl. Any other such movements will be overtraining the bicep. Now, to add size to the bicep, what you want to stay in range of from repetitions and sets from the very beginning and basic training phase is simply try to keep your repetition between 10 and 12. On maximum weight, try to get as many as eight repetitions. Building size on the off season, what you want to do there is simply try to perform five sets maximum with progressively pyramiding your weight to a heavier stage. Now, an explanation on your pyramiding phase begins as such. Use a weight that is primarily light to handle to start off with, with your first set. Your second set, you should increase your increments of the weight that you are progressively adding up at more weight as you go along.
You know, on the other side of this coin, I'm always being asked, you know, what is bodybuilding? What does bodybuilding mean to you? And I think to, the best way to approach that is to, to single out the three aspects of bodybuilding. It's a sport. It's an art. It's a personalized sculpturing. And of course, it's success. Many of us get involved in the sport just for the sheer glamour of wanting to be a champion. Those of us who will make it and those may not make it. But the thrill of it is putting the effort in that is required to be that champion. I think if you look at the, the stature of how bodybuilding is going, there's only room for one champion per se. But the beauty of the sport is everybody can be a champion in his own right. You know, bodybuilding has a long way to go. Uh, when you get involved in it, you see that what it takes from you, what it offers you. There's a lot of misconception upon the word success in bodybuilding. Just because you make it to be number one, number two, number three, you know, people seem to dream on. They picture themselves driving fine cars and, and ladies, and it's just one of those things that you see a sport of the world. Everything develops around your feet. So now you see, for some, that is their sense of reality, because this is what they're training and working for. For myself, that's not reality. Tell us about your personal background. Has it influenced your bodybuilding career? Oh, I would say yes. Uh, simply because me going into bodybuilding was a, a hobby at first. It turned out to be a way of changing my lifestyle. Secondly, because once I started excelling into bodybuilding, I thought that now this is a way to change jobs. Mm -hmm. you know? So now Pursue Bodybuilding became more of a, a really fought after thing. So I can change my way of living. Uh, and what's going on in your life outside bodybuilding? Well, I'll tell you. Social life, family <laughs> life. You're not married. No, definitely not person. married. Um, bodybuilding has taken so much of my time. It's just very difficult to have a steady social life. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things about this sport. It's so demanding. And you do lose sight on personal things. So right now, and it's still bodybuilding. It's still making bodybuilding work because of my position that I now hold in the bodybuilding arena, um, it's a constant thing, constant drive of trying to make things happen. So you kind of push off personal interest and everything involves around bodybuilding mm -hmm. is on the agenda right now. Mm -hmm. Do you just concentrate on bodybuilding, on the sport, on uh, shows and posing exhibitions exactly. and sports and so on? There is no time whatsoever to uh, follow a social <laughs> life. <laughs> Actually not, because my social life revolves around my jobs, my exhibitions. Because as right now, at this very moment, I find myself traveling back to America and mm -hmm. here in Europe every 14 days. Um, I'm not in Europe, I'm in another country. Um, so it's, my social life begins where the plane lands. And so that weekend, I'm doing that. If it's Miami, if it's California, if it's China, if it's wherever, it's a couple of days and it's back to normal again. It seems to be a severe and ascetic lifestyle to be a professional oh, bodybuilder. It's something that you didn't, you never thought it would happen as such. But that, now that it does, it's, it's really nice something that never had an opportunity to do. I didn't anyway, at this type of level, so it's great for me. 
Yes, that gives us the opportunity to talk uh, your bodybuilding career. Uh, would you please tell us the contest you've entered and the top titles you have won? Starting from the ground level up, um, my interest brought me into just normal regional shows, state and local shows, which was actually my first contest was Mr. Berlin Show, where I currently <laughs> live. Um, six months after training, I entered that show and won that particular uh, I furthered down to the western portions of Germany, the different areas, and won mm -hmm. regional shows there. My biggest international turnabout was when I decided to compete for the Mr. Universe contest. Uh, I had an injury shortly before that show, and which allowed me to take a year off to recuperate. And when I came back around the same direction, I was not able to uh, compete in that organization any longer, which was a German organization. Mm -hmm. So I was forced to turn to the American organizations, which was the AAU. In 1987, I went back to America to do my first show, which was Mr. America. And I won that show, which catapulted me to the MPC organization in America, the National Physique Committee, uh, to do those particular shows, which was yeah. in America the top national level show. Yeah. And I won that show. Uh, my next outing took me into my professional outing. What year was it? This is 1988. 88. Right. Um, winning Did that you win the overall? Overall. You know, I right. came out of nowhere. Uh, I must add, 87 I started. Right after I missed America, I went to the Nationals. Yeah. And I took fourth place. And I vowed to come back in 88 <laughs> a different body. I came back as the overall champion in the 88. Uh, four months later, contemplating doing my first professional show, which was the uh, Night of Champions, uh, the IFAB. And I won that show, which gave me the opportunity to compete in the greatest the Super Bowl of bodybuilding 1989, Mr. Olympia, which mm -hmm. I yeah. astonishingly placed third. So climbing the ladder in such a fashion has been my career so far. Vince, what do you like the most about bodybuilding? Oh, bodybuilding is a way of life, man. It was uh, an adventure. It opens up a lot of doors. You become somebody. Uh, it's just a whole abundance of things that come together, mm -hmm. which I think it's awareness of. You, know, you all of a sudden you become somebody out of all the millions of people on the earth, people recognize you from what you do. Mm -hmm. It's just exposure, I think. Mm -hmm. And if you could ch uh, change anything for the better in bodybuilding, what would it be, Vince? Ooh, that's a good <laughs> question. Um, I would think the organization of bodybuilding to make it more, um, more feasible for not only the top four or five particular people in the world to make a living, but to stem all the way down to the top 15 or 20 people in bodybuilding. The payoff of the sport, in my opinion, is just not, um, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. There's too much energy, too much time being invested for overturnage of luck, for mm -hmm. example, if you happen to do well. So it needs a lot more future as far as the competitors. The organization is blooming. It gets bigger mm -hmm. every year. But when you go down to the line of the main ingredients, which are the competitors, I don't think we're getting a fair enough share to make a living in the sport. Mm -hmm. Now, we've just completed a serious back training workout. Our next movement is going to be working the calves. Now, you'll notice that the calves is a very, very hard training muscle. It's very stubborn. And the best way to train it is to put as much pressure on it as possibly can throughout the entire movement. And the best way to do that, I feel, is by utilizing maximum weight. Now, being that they're the calves and they're used daily, then utilize the serious weight as possible. For that purpose, I like to use the leg press machine. Here you can add on 500 kilos or more and train your calves easily. Using that type of training, you're right in the same area to continue on training your thighs. And when you finish your two heavy body parts training very heavy like that, you want to kind of situate yourself in one area. So you'll see in a very few seconds.
in bodybuilding, we don't have a monopoly situation. We have uh, several federations. Right. What are the advantages and the disadvantages of having many of them, mm -hmm. some federations? I would think that the way the structure is now, most, or I would say the majority of the bodybuilders go toward the IFBB um, simply because there is a professional status to achieve from it. The goal of being in bodybuilding will be maximized by being in the top contest, which is Mr. Olympia. Um, bodybuilding's life, thanks to Joe Weider and Ben Weider, has mm. been the greatest push of the IFBB. They've organized the sport, and they've got it to where it is today. The other people, the NABA, the AAU, these are also credible organizations, but they fail to be able to give you that professionalism at the end. You want to make the big money. You look who's paying the big money. It's the IFBB. Uh, who has the most uh, type of publicity going? It's the IFBB. So it only stems the thing. If you want to be part of the biggest wheel mm. rolling, you need to be part of the IFBB. <laughs> I do understand. It, back to your situation of being a professional bodybuilder. We have so mo many of them, so many professional guys looking how to make an income out of professional bodybuilding. And so um, you have so many, but then you notice some grow more popular than others. Mm -hmm. Why? Why wins? Um, popularity stems from being on the scene, stems from being publicized yeah. a lot more, uh, even till today's bodybuilders. Um, I noticed that some of the older, not, not even older, some of the bodybuilders today who are placing low in most competitions in different countries are the most popular ones, um, simply because of their publicity. Mm -hmm. you know, they receive a lot of publicity. People are aware of you. They may not know anything about bodybuilding, but if an event yeah. comes to town right. and they see your picture in the paper, and it's, oh, this guy, although he placed 15th or 16th in the biggest show. Mm -hmm. um, popularity stems also from the individual himself. Uh, his openness towards people, um, his charisma, his character. These things have a, a positive uh, effect on the bodybuilder in the limelight that he may find himself in. It's nothing guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Again, there's a help uh, from publicity if it's there. But if it's not there and you do well, you, whatever you do under the limelight for that moment, even in your posing, you portray in a, a message. That message is, this is me, this is who I am that sort of uh, pull that you have on the audience. People remember that. You know. So then you become a question of, who are you? Who is this guy? He mm -hmm. posed like this, or we spoke to him. He was genuinely a nice person to talk to, his personality. These things will make your popularity boom. And when that happens, you can open doors for other things, movies, um, different mm. types of ventures in life. So it pays to be a good apple and not a sour grape. And to the very end, let's play a free association game. I'll mention some names, and you give me your comments on them. Uh, Lee Haney. Oh, absolutely the greatest bodybuilder on this earth today. <laughs> Definitely. John Brown. John is a charismatic uh, teacher. I've learned a lot of things from John, and he's got a lot to offer. Uh -huh. And Rich Gaspari. Richie. From what I've heard, we haven't had too many conversations, but I admire Richie's potential to be where he's placed himself over the years of bodybuilding to make it to that point of being second in the world for two or three consecutive years. Uh, very intense person. Shows you what hard work you do. You know, hard work, basic training, and the right attitude. Take you far beyond where you, your limitations are. Mm -hmm. Vic Richards. Big Vic. He's Big the type Vic. of guy that bodybuilders yeah. admire. You know, uh, even the outside people want to know, who made this kind of guy? You know, God made this man larger than life. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Hill. Phil's another incredible bodybuilder. Right. Stature, structure, mass, excellent poser. Um, again, I have no really personal association with these guys, but um, I admire them for what they've done, what they do continuously, to be able to be on stage with these guys and to be placed ahead of them in previous competitions makes me admire them that much more because of their, that structure. Uh -huh. This must be a little bit fun.
that's all I seem to do When you're not here I long to hold you near Baby, this time Together we must bear Holding you close Taking time to let you know
going no place without my dumbbells. <laughs>